which symbol is used for destructor function which symbol we are going to use we are going to use tilde so if it is a parameterized constructor it will going to take one or more parameters or argument if that is the things which will going to be possible then this is also true or the answer must be yes so what do you mean by default constructor here so function which initializes the data member with no argument everybody a warm welcome to one and all i welcome you all to the revision session on chapter 9 that is constructor and destructor i am rohini ts lecturer department of computer science vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence mysuru in this revision session of this chapter 9 we'll see the marks distribution of this chapter so if you study this chapter you are going to get 8 marks then we'll see how the marks distribution will going to takes place so you are going to get one question in the one mark and you are going to get one question in the two marks and no need to worry about the three mark question so you are going to get only one question from the five marks total you are going to get three questions from this chapter and it will be for eight marks so you need to concentrate on one mark two mark as well as five mark question we'll see the important and most frequently asked question from one mark now so what is constructor so if you are dealing with a constructor and destructor it is mandatory to understand the concept called what do you mean by constructor then what is constructor here it is a special member function uh, that is called automatically when an object is created when the object is created constructor will going to be called or constructor is also called as a special member function that is used to initialize the data member of a class that definitions also that you can write for the constructor question so next which symbol is used for destructor function which symbol we are going to use we are going to use tilde so we are going to use this tilde symbol in order to represent the destructor next mention any one characteristics of copy constructor so here i have listed out two points out of this you can write any one in order to get one mark so copy constructor is not invoked explicitly so it will not going to be invoked explicitly so the copy constructors are invoked automatically when a new object is created and equated to an already existing object in the declaration statement itself when the copy constructor will going to be invoked so if i am going to create one object or if i am going to have a new object if i am copying the content to that new object from the existing object then this copy constructor will going to be executed or it will going to be invoked so out of this you can write any one character in order to get one mark next define destructor what do you mean by destructor here it is just a complement of constructor constructors are used to allocate the memory or it will going to be uh, invoked automatically when the object is created but here when the object is destroyed or demolished at that time this destructor will going to be invoked so destructor is a special member function that is executed when an object of that class is destroyed so created it for constructor destroyed is for destructor so you should remember the definition of both constructor as well as the destructor next mention any one feature of destructor so now we got to know what is the definition of destructor now we have to mention any one feature of this destructor so it has the same feature as of the constructor out of that you have to mention any one feature in order to get one mark so that the destructor name must have the same name as of the class which must be preceded by tilde symbol so we are going to use this tilde symbol with destructor so that it must have a same name as of the class which is preceded by tilde symbol next destructor cannot take arguments therefore cannot be overloaded so that is also one of the feature it is what uh, default destructor it will not going to take any arguments or parameter so if it is not taking arguments then we can't do the overloading here so that destructor has no return type it has no return type or no data type will be associated with this destructor so out of this uh, points you can write any one in order to get one mark next constructors can be overloaded s yes or no can we overload the constructor we have a parameterized constructor right so if it is a parameterized constructor it will going to take one or more parameters or argument if that is the things which will going to be possible then this is also true or the answer must be s yes. next we'll deal with a two marks question now so what is the first question give any two advantages of parameterized 
constructor. What are the advantages that I can get if I have a parameterized constructor in my program? So the parameterized constructor can be overloaded so that you can have two or more program with the same name but with different parameters or different data types. So if you wanted to get that benefit, you have to use this parameterized constructor and then for an object created with one argument, the constructor with only one argument is invoked and executed. It will going to be based on the what number of arguments and type of argument that will going to be matched and that kind of uh, parameterized constructor will going to be invoked when the object is created. And then the parameterized constructor can have default arguments and default values. This is also considered as a features as well as the advantages of having this parameterized constructor. Next, mention the different methods in which constructors are invoked. How we are going to invoke the constructor? It will be by three types. So one is implicit call, explicit call and initialization of an object at the time of declaration with equal operator that is assignment operator. It is most frequently asked question. Mention, uh, consider this as a important question. Next, we'll see the next question that is what are the disadvantages of default constructor? A constructor which does not accept any parameter will be considered as what? Default constructor. So what are the disadvantages? So when many objects of the same class are created, all the objects are initialized to same set of values by default constructor. So this default constructor will going to assign all the objects value as a same value. So if you are creating 50 objects for a particular constructor or for a particular class at that time all the 50 objects will be initialized to same value and it is not possible to initialize different objects with different initial value using this default constructor. Somehow it is not possible in order to initialize the object with different values or different parameters. So these are the disadvantages with respect to this default constructor. So next mention any two features of default constructor. So what do you mean by default constructor here? So function which initializes the data member with no argument. The function which does not accept parameters is also considered as default constructor. Then what are its features? So it can be explicitly written in the public section of the class where we can now use this in the public section of a class. So default constructor is not defined in a program. The C++ compile automatically generate it in a program. So if you are not uh, declaring or if you are not taking this in a program, so by default uh, whatever the constructor it will going to be called or used will be the default constructor only. So the purpose of the default constructor is to construct a default object of the class type. This is the usage or these are the features of this default constructor. Next here you have this question number 5 that is give the syntax and example for default constructor. How we are going to have this default constructor? Somehow it is uh, like a normal constructor. So if it is not accepting a parameter then it will be a default constructor. So class class name within a flower brace under the public section we must take this class name. That means uh, both the constructor name and class name both must be same. So here you can see that within this parameter we don't have any arguments or a parameter that's why it will be considering as a default constructor. So in this uh, you can have uh, any number of data members and that will going to be initialized and we are going to close the class definition here. So example class name is number under the public section without any return type we have a member function called number which is same as the name of a class and we are initializing this n is equal to 0 close the flower braces then uh, closing of class. So or else you can also take this uh, int n. So here you can uh, declare first then you give the initial value or else you can write here int itself that is int n is equal to 0. This is the example as well as the syntax for default constructor. We'll see the next question that is question number 6. What is destructor which is the operator used with destructor? Already we know the definition of destructor. So destructor is a special member function that is executed when object of that class is destroyed. Then which operator we are going to use with destructor? That is tilde symbol. Important question. Okay. This is regarding 2 marks question. So now we'll see about the 5 marks questions now. Very, very important questions and this is sure short questions. So you can expect surely for your examination 
that is write the rules for constructor function so what are the rules we have six to seven rules so if you have written five rules then that will be enough for you to get five marks so the name of a constructor must have the same name as of the class it should be declared under a public section and also does not have any written type or no data type will be used with this constructor and this constructor uh, are executed automatically when the objects are created and uh, we are going to have this constructor that means we can have any number of a constructor in a class but every constructor must have the same name as of the class and it is not possible to refer to the address of a constructor and the constructor make implicit call to the operator call new and delete when the memory allocation is required this is very very important so you can expect it for five marks question next we'll see the second question describe destructor with example so here also you have to write the definition of a destructor and also we have some of the characteristics somehow same as a constructor and uh, this destructor will going to be preceded with this tilde symbol and it is also will not going to accept any argument so if it is not accepting overloading cannot be happen and destructor also has no return type and even it must be in the public section and remember one thing if it is can't be overloaded you can't take it more than one time in a program so that it can have only one destructor in each class and it should comes under the public section and uh, we cannot inherit this destructor so you can expect either features of constructor or a rules for writing a constructor program or destructor program and uh, we'll see the syntax and example here so you can see the general syntax and uh, example class class name class name this is what uh, constructor this is constructor and if it is preceded by tail symbol then that will be considered as destructor and you can have only one uh, destructor in a single class so class counter counter is a Uh, constructor here, and we are using that in order to initialize. That is, int n is equal to zero, or else here also you can declare int n. Okay. Then uh, after this, we have a uh, destructor that is preceded by tail symbol. So we can have only one destructor, and no need to have any function body uh, within this destructor. And uh, at last, we are going to end the scope of a class. This is the syntax as well as the example for destructor along with this features. Let's see the next question that is what is constructor explain programming example explain with programming example already we know the definition of this constructor so uh, you can see the uh, programming one programming example here we have a class called counter and uh, here we have a member function called counter here that is used to initialize the data members of a class called counter and we have one more member function called uh, increment count that will going to be incremented and we have a get count function so these are the member functions of a class called counter but this counter is a constructor so how can i get to know this is a constructor because it is under the scope of public and it has no return type like this void or int that's why i am going to consider this counter as a constructor so after this in the main function we are going to create an object for this class counter c1 and c2 when this object c1 is created or when it is uh, created in the class at that time this constructor function will going to be immediately or automatically will be called so it will going to be initialized to zero and remaining things will going to takes place when the object is accessing the member function called incrementing or get a count so if they are accessing those function that function uh, will going to be called and that will going to be invoked so after that we are going to close the main function so along with this you can specify which is the class and which is the constructor here how we are initializing by writing all these program with this uh, explanation you can get five marks we'll see the next question write the features of copy constructor so here you have to write any five features of copy constructor this is also parameterized constructor using one object can be copied to another object so content of one object will be copied to another object here and copy constructor is not invoked explicitly and if the copy constructors are invoked automatically when a new object is created and equated to already existing object in the declaration statement itself 
What is the next feature here? Here I have listed out the example like uh, how copy constructor will going to be copied from one object to another object. So when the new object is declared, existing object will going to be passed as a parameters. So along with these features, you can have one or more examples and also when the object is passed to a function using a pass by value, copy constructor will going to be called automatically and this copy constructor invoked when object uh, returns a value. So these are the features of this copy constructor. We'll see the next question that is regarding discuss the features of parameterized constructor. We know about the parameterized constructor. So if a constructor accepting one or more uh, arguments are a parameter that will be considered as a parameterized constructor. So what are its feature? So using this type of constructor, it is possible to initialize different objects with different value. So when it is possible to overload, then I can have a different value for my different objects. I can give a different data types also. So that parameterized constructors are also invoked automatically whenever the objects with arguments are created. The parameterized constructors are used to initialize the object. And also we have some more features with respect to this parameterized constructor. So it can be overloaded. If it is a parameter, it can be overloaded. I can take a different data types. I can take a different number of arguments or a parameter. So that uh, object is created with only one argument is invoked and executed. The constructor with only one argument and uh, the same kind of data type, then that kind of uh, constructor will going to be invoked. And this parameterized constructor can have default arguments as well as the default values. Though it is a parameterized constructor, if you wanted to have a default values and default arguments then that is also possible with this parameterized constructor. So we'll see the next question that is regarding explain the features of default constructor, write the syntax and example for default constructor. Already we have discussed regarding the syntax example along with that we already know regarding this features of default constructor. If it is not accepting the parameter that will be default and it is also called as zero argument constructor. Remember this point. So if any type of a constructor which is not accepting any argument that will be considered as zero argument constructor and already we have listed out the features of this uh, destructor and also we know the uh, syntax as well as the example of this default constructor. This is how you are supposed to answer for five mark question. Whatever the question they have given. So you have to write all the content like uh, you have to write the features as well as you have to write the syntax and example. So each topic carries some marks here. So if you have missed uh, in order to write all these things then you are going to lose the marks. So analyze the question properly and write the answer whatever they have asked in the question. We'll see the next question that is the last question. What is constructor? Mention different types of constructor and explain any one constructor in brief. Understand dear student, what is constructor is for one marks. If you are mentioning that will be for one mark. So we are going to left out with uh, three marks, right? So they are asking you to explain any one constructor. So that will going to carry three marks. So here constructor is a definition that already we know the definition. And what are the types of constructor we have? Default, parameterized as well as copy constructor. Already we have discussed regarding all these types with the features, syntax as well as the example. So out of this you can pick any two or you can pick any one which is so familiar with you. Then you write its definition, write the syntax, write the example. So if you know its feature, write that also. That will surely gonna help you in order to get complete fine mask. Write the definition of a constructor, then mention the types as well as you have to pick any one out of that, then explain its definition and its uh, write its feature, write the syntax, write one example. So that will be enough for you in order to get fine marks. I hope that's all regarding this uh, constructor and destructor chapter. Read what about the uh, constructor and its types of constructor and features, uh, definition as well as syntax and example of each type of constructor. Then analyze what are the methods of invoking the constructor explicit, implicit as well as using equal symbol and uh, learn the definition of a destructor along with its feature, its syntax and example. So if you learned uh, these many things, surely you are going to get 8 marks from this chapter. It's all about today's session. I hope you all understood. Let me meet you in the next session with a further revision. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.